Okay. Uh, so one thing is uh, what's the another definition of big data? So this comes from Forrester Research. So they say big data is the the frontier of a firm's ability to store, process, and access all the data it needs to operate, make decisions, reduce risks, and serve customers. So this is kind of a business-oriented uh, definition. So uh, this goes uh, across all business processes and all business functions. So all aspects of the business. Uh, big data uh, can be utilized in, you know, it doesn't just have to be utilized in terms of uh, uh, analyzing the customer. Uh, big data can be uh, used in even to analyze functions within business. Like, for example, I think uh, we'll talk about a case uh, where Hewlett Packard tried to use uh, data mining to forecast which of their salespeople were going to uh, likely to leave their firm. They were worried about losing their salespeople, and they built a model using data uh, to try and forecast or predict uh, which ones, or try to identify which ones of their uh, salespeople uh, might leave the company. So it can be used within the company. It doesn't have to be just for servicing customers and uh, uh, things like that. So in other words, um, it goes across all business processes. You could use it in the accounting department. You could use it in the sales department. You could use it in the, right? And all business functions. So businesses can, uh, a business can be divided uh, by what are called business processes. And it could also, it could also be divided by what are called business functions. It's just sort of a w different ways of of, a, um, of uh, separating the business into different parts. So uh, you can look that up on the internet if you care. Okay, I'm just re inserting this into the video. This is, I made this later, and I'm just inserting this. I thought it would just be interesting to check uh, the meaning of business processes and business functions. Now this really doesn't have much to do with our subject but it is a little bit interesting. So I thought I'd just sh uh, show that. So let's take a look at that. So here I did a search for business process. I'm sorry, I want to do business functions first. Here I did a, a business functions. And so if we check this, you can see this diagram. So what is this? I see production. I see marketing. I see finance. I see general management. I see public relations, personnel and human resources, administration, purchasing, and production. Okay, so what are these? These are just, uh, these are things that businesses do, right? They have a marketing department, they have a finance department, they have a general management department, personnel department, they have different departments, right? Uh, I don't see accounting here. But I guess that must be included in one of these other ones. I'm not sure. Maybe it's wrong. Maybe I think that should be included here. But anyway, I don't know. Anyway, so this is like one way of dividing up what a business does. In other words, we can say, well, business uh, one department is the finance department. Another is the general management. Another is this. 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 So these are we can divide up a business like this, and uh, you know we can say, okay, here we these are the people in the marketing department and uh, you know these are the computers that the marketing department uses and these are the people in the finance department these are the computers the fi and so on right we can divide the business up like that into these categories okay on the other hand there's a different way to divide a, a business up you can take the same business instead of dividing it up like this you can divide it up according to what they s they call business processes. So a business process just means that instead of dividing it up like we just saw, you can say, you can divide it up according to the products that they produce or the services that they produce. So, um, uh, you know, maybe you have a company that makes, 
Um, maybe you have a company that makes different kinds of fashion products. So uh, you can um, divide up the company, you know, these are the people that make the dresses and these are the, and market the dresses and sell the dresses and whatever that you need to do with dresses. And these are the people that make the handbags and that sell the handbags. And so you can divide the company up like that instead of saying, because l if you think about it, okay, the people that, mi uh, so if you talk about the dresses and all the people that do that, you know, some of those people are going to be in the marketing department, some of them are going to be in the finance department, some of them are going to be in the other departments that we just saw. So we're dividing up the company in a different way, right? Uh, we're getting uh, different sets of people, right? Before we had the marketing people in one group and the finance people in another. Now we're going to have all the people that handle the dresses in one group. So that's going to include some of the marketing people and some of the finance people and so on. So that's the d that's what they mean by business process or they say business method. Let's look into this a little bit more detail even though it's a little bit uh, complicated to read it. But it's, uh, anyway, that's the idea and it's uh, it's kind of interesting that uh, to think about you can divide uh, a business up in different ways. Okay, let's just take a look at this a little bit more. It's not really that important, but in the uh, when people talk about business a um, business analytics, or as we call it, uh, we're talking about predictive analytics, they do use these words from time to time, so it may be useful for us to understand them. So let's just take a look at this. So a business process or method, so what is a business process as opposed to a business function? We saw functions before me marketing, finance, and so on, but a business process is a collection of related or structured activities or tasks that produce a, pr a specific service or product. So produce the dresses, for example, or serve a particular goal, uh, whatever, uh, for a particular customer or customers. Okay, it can also often be visualized with a flowchart as a sequence of activities with interleaving decision points or a process matrix as a sequence of activities with relevance rules based on the data in the process. Well, that's not so clear, but um, basically they're just saying, you know, it's a, it's a s sequence of things that we do in order to make that dress. Now, one thing they do is they talk about Adam Smith here, and I thought that was kind of interesting. <coughs> so let's take a look at that. Adam Smith and Adam Smith is very f uh, famous in terms of his, uh, uh, he was, a, I guess, an economic philosopher, as they might have called him back then in 1776. But he studied, he was one of the key uh, thinkers about capitalism and what capitalism does. And so this is interesting. One of the most significant people in the 18th century to describe processes was Adam Smith in his famous example of a pin factory. So a factory that makes pins. Well, they, they didn't make computers back then, but I guess they made pins. Um, so here's a, his Smith described the production of a pin in the following way. Well, it's not so interesting to, to know about what the production of a pin is, but let's just read this. So one man draws out the wire. I don't know, that means he stretches out the wire, I guess. Another straightens it. A third cuts it. A fourth points it, means gives it a point. We're talking about making a pin. A fifth grinds it at the top for receiving the head. So they're going to put a, a head on the top of the pin. To make the head requires two or three distinct operations to put it on its particular uh, business. To I don't know what that means. To whiten the pins is another. And the important business of making a pin is in this manner divided into 18 distinct operations. So we see here, it's like the process description of making a pin. There are 18 different, uh, uh, what does he call it? Operations, uh, which in some manufactories are all performed by distinct hands. So he's saying some companies 
We'll do this by having different people do each one of these 18 jobs. On the other hand, though in others, the same man will sometimes perform two or three of these jobs. So this is interesting, but then they go on to say, this is very interesting, next, Smith also recognized how the output could be increased through the use of, the, of labor division. So he's, I guess, one of the first people to talk about division of labor. So, you know, you find the people that are good at doing one of the tasks and you let them do just that one task. And then you find people that are good at doing another of the tasks and you let them do just that one task. So they say, previously, in a society where production was dominated by handcrafted goods, so we're not talking about factory goods, but handcrafted goods, one man would perform all the activities required during the production process. While Smith described how the work was divided into a set of simpler tasks, which would be performed by specialized workers. Now this is amazing. Next thing. The result of labor division in Smith's example resulted in productivity increasing by 24,000%, i.e., the same number of workers made 240 times as many pins as they had been producing before the introduction of uh, labor division. So this must have been just an amazing discovery for them, right, to realize that they could, by doing this division of labor, they could get so much more productivity, right? That's like somebody discovering the computer or something, you know, so much power in this discovery. Anyway, so this is the idea of uh, labor division, but more generally thinking about uh, the process of making the pin. And so following the, the pin as it's made, as opposed to, we saw business functions before, uh, like the um, finance department and the marketing department. So this is interesting. Okay, anyway, I'm going to insert this discussion into the last the video that you're watching. So it's a little bit maybe disjointed, so you'll see why. Um, most of the examples today will be for marketing and understanding the customer, but it can be used in so many more ways than this uh, in a company or in, a s in science or and so on. As I said, HP modeled their own sales force to try to predict which of its sales uh, team would leave soon. You can't see that, but that's what it says. So one question is how much data do you have to have for it to be big data? So this comes from a website called 23andMe, and uh, what you what they do well, you you send them ninety nine dollars, and uh, they send you this box, and inside this box there's this tube, and uh, you put your saliva in that tube, you just spit in it, I guess, and you send it back to them, and uh, based on that, they will uh, tell you where your ancestors come from, where in the world, like are you 70% of, you know, whatever, Italian and 20% Chinese or whatever it is, right? So they'll tell you. Now, uh, like in America, that's kind of an interesting question because Americans come from so many different places, whereas maybe in other countries not quite as interesting, but uh, might be interesting, I don't know. And also, they'll give you probabilities for uh, different diseases that you may get. So they also give you the probability of having certain medical conditions, by pr and all of this is done by processing your DNA. So the question might be, how big is your DNA? It's uh, seven, uh, when they send it back to you, I guess, uh, it's 700 megabytes. It's not tiny, but uh, it's basically the size of a video, uh, or even smaller than a video. So most people would not say that that's, a, that's big data. But what is the, what's in that data? Uh, well, there's like four billion chemicals or sequences of chemicals 
and to scan through that sequence of chemicals that is a big data problem so storing it is not uh, a big problem but analyzing it is a big big data problem uh, it's a challenge to store 700 megabytes but it's, it's I'm sorry it's not a challenge but it is a challenge to process it so one thing is we can say is you know it depends big data is relative it it differs for every organization Okay, so let's talk about uh, this, Big Data++. Plus plus. So uh, here we mean that uh, increasingly companies say that Big Data is all of their data. So in other words, um, uh, c companies have a lot of data within the company and then they also have you know, access to social media data and uh, lots of other data that, they don't, uh, that they're not producing. So that's what we mean by big data plus plus. So there's extra data out there. In fact, uh, basically data is coming from people or people's activities. Not just that though, of course, so there's uh, uh, astrological data. I'm sorry, <laughs> um, uh, astronomy data. And um, so, uh, and there's lots of other data, of course, as well. But anyway, uh, the population of the Earth is about 7 billion people, and the more people that use technology, the more data is generated. And it's not just about uh, people, it's uh, companies and machines and sensors and so on. So big data basically means all of your data. So uh, we can talk about uh, textual data. Now, not all data is textual data, right? Most data, in fact, that we think about, we don't usually think of text as data. But if we're focusing on text, uh, we can say that we have uh, what's called structured text, which is what you might find in a relational database. Uh, and that can, I, in this uh, context, I think uh, structured text could be numerical data as well. And then we have unstructured text, and that might be like uh, Twitter data or Facebook data or emails that a firm has or opinion site data, uh, this kind of data. And then there's also video and audio and so on. And uh, that uh, might be referred to as binary data. So, for example, there's a cable TV company that has a large Hadoop cluster. Now, what this means is a uh, cluster just means um, Hadoop is a technology for having uh, what's called a distributed database. And that just means that you don't have, you're not limited to keeping your data on just one machine. Of course, you don't want to be limited to just one machine because uh, one machine can't necessarily hold that much data. So you want to have some technology for, um, for having uh, your data or your database uh, on many machines and you want it to be efficient and you want to be able to like, use it quickly and firms need to do this and government, or government organizations need to do this and uh, telephone companies need to do it and so on. So um, now traditionally uh, we would use a rel what's called a relational database but there's a new technology called Hadoop and so a Hadoop cluster just means a group of computers that have Hadoop on them. And so anyway, uh, so uh, they have binary, uh, I'm sorry, they have video da data, this cable t TV company. And um, uh, they try to go through all their TV shows and they scan and try and find like the perfect place to put their commercials. So, you know, they have some kind of data mining algorithms that uh, might help them to uh, predict where would be a good place to put um, a commercial. But uh, they have to scan through all of this uh, binary data, this video data. So big data is all your data. So structured text data described by a schema, relational database, XML, delimited flat files, and system events. So I don't know if you're familiar with this or not. Uh, unstructured text, freeform text, emails, documents, tweets, blogs, comments, Facebook status, genome data, like uh, from people's genes, 
uh, binary data, audio, images, video, surveillance cameras, geological survey maps, Siri voice, right? All of this. Okay, uh, next, who cares about big data? Uh, who's thinking about big data? Currently, firms are actually only using about 12% of the data that they have, so they don't even have to go out and look for big data sources. They can already be begin with what they have, and they already have these huge opportunities, but right now, firms are only beginning to understand the potential here. Firms are flush in data and getting flusher, but only use a fraction of it for analytics. So they have lots of data, both unstructured and structured, but they're not using it yet. And this is an opportunity for you as a new graduate to uh, work with them and to be familiar with the efforts that they're trying to make. And why do firms want to use big data? According to Forrester, they want to leverage the data that they have to extract more value from it. We will see what that means later. Uh, volume is another issue, so they have a tremendous amount of data and they want to know how to deal with it. So this has to do with like the Hadoop. How to uh, Hadoop is a way to store lots of data. Uh, they want more team members to be able to access and understand it. Okay, let's look at this. Okay, let's come back to this in the next video. So this is a survey, the results of a survey. So let's take a look at it in the next video.